make your wish. Oh boy, that's a nice little town back there. Oh say, I'd sort of like to see the herd down by the river bottom grass. All that's been taken care of. Oh my, been just as busy as beavers while I've been gone. Oh, but I don't suppose you said any day guard, no. Oh yes, everything's in apple pie order. Well, 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 well. Things do seem to be in pretty good shape. Seems to be that way. I guess the rest of you might as well go on into town. You mule-headed jackrabbit, what are you trying to do? Cut my throat? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Wishbone. You got a razor I can borrow? What are you going to do with a razor? I'm going to shave my face. Now, you know how to use one of these things? Oh, yes, sir. First, you soak your face real good. Then you kind of draw and scrape with it. Well, that's a general idea, but you be careful. It's a dangerous tool in an unskilled hand. Well, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. I surely will. Uh, uh, what are you getting all duded up for? You aren't pretending you know any girls. Oh, no, Mr. Wishbone. I got cousins in town. My ma said if we came through Buffalo Wells, that I should look up Cousin Laverne and Cousin Posey. You're getting all duded up and shaved just to see a couple of cousins? Well, Cousin Laverne's an important female. She's an actress. No. Ah, oh, you're telling me a windy mushy. There isn't any theater in Buffalo Wells. Oh, yes, you must be mistaken, Miss Wishbone. I'm begging your pardon. But she acts in a big theater called the Longhorn. You poor benighted idiot, that's a saloon. Well, maybe so. But doesn't matter, Mr. Wishbone. Well, she's acted nearly every place. St. Louis. In New Orleans, in Memphis, Tennessee. And she's awful rich. She's got a big house and servants and everything. And I gotta look kind of nice. Well, you just give me that. You got all these fancy people to see. We're gonna have to see you get a good close shave. <laughs> This is a saloon, ain't it? Come on, bartender, let's have another beer. Come on. Tables are all open for your pleasure, and the bar's going strong. <laughs> what do you want? Well, I'm looking for Miss Mushgrove, Miss Laverne Mushgrove. Well, who are you? Well, I'm her cousin, but once you move, I think. Upstairs, that middle door. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. It's open, Tim. Oh, I thought she was somebody else. What do you want? Uh, cousin Laverne? Cousin? Well, I'm Harkness, Cousin Laverne. Harkness Mushgrove the third. Uh, my cousin. 
cousin Harkness. Come in. Or sit down. Oh, excuse the way I must look. I haven't been very well lately. A touch ague, I guess. You look just fine, Cousin Laverne. Who sent you here? Oh, I'm with her cattle drive. We're headed for Abilene. And Ma said we passed... I always liked your Ma. <laughs> Not that there was ever anything we agreed on. Oh, your Ma was always so... so respectable. Huh? Well, Ma's always talking good things about you. About your big house and your, your servants and things. <laughs> oh, Cousin Harkness. How'd you like to buy me a drink? Oh, yes, ma'am. I just stay downstairs. You don't have to go anywhere. Go help yourself. Oh, no thanks, Cousin LeBert. Oh, of course not. Your ma wouldn't like it. No, ma'am. I could have had them. Houses and servants. Just like your ma said. Why, men in $50 suits came begging around me all the time. And I said, it ain't how long you live. It's how high. How full of fun and laughter and, and good times. That's living, you tell him. Well, I'll be sure to tell him, Cousin Laverne. I'll be proud and pleased to tell him. Cousin Harkness. Come here. It's all a lie. I never lived. Just took a long time dying. Harkness, I got a sister. Oh, yes, I'm cousin Posey. She can't stay here. Don't let her get her out. But, but cousin Vern, my, my boss. Please, Harkness, get her out. Well, yes, sir. You take her back to your ma, you hear? Promise. Cousin? When you get back home and you tell them about me, remember I was an actress once, and a good one. Even if I was the only one that believed. Surely cousinly of you, cousin, um... Harkness, I told you that twice. Oh, yes, Harkness. <laughs> and you make it all sound so simple. Well, Mr. Sloan, Posey and me, we ought to be getting back to camp before it gets too late. Well, she probably needs a lot of sleep in 15 or so. So if you just tell me. Oh, no, thank you, sir. But I don't indulge. Uh, cousin Harkness, you being a cattleman, I don't suppose you paid much attention to, uh... Oh, I've got the Longhorn fixed up. Oh, but I did, sir. It's just beautiful. Well, uh, thank you. Well, that cost money, Cousin Harkness. A great deal of money. All the money I could beg or borrow. I dug myself a deep hole to make the Longhorn the finest place in the territory. And it just so happens that Cousin Posey's helping me climb back out. She keeps the place filled to the rafters. Well, what's Cousin Posey got to do with the Longhorn? Um, Eric! Yes, Mr. Sloan? Send Posey in here. You trying to make a fool out of me? Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Did you want me, Mr. Tim? Uh, come in, Posey. Meet your cousin Harkness. Well, I ain't never heard of no cousin Harkness. You're, you're Posey? I'm Posey. Cousin Harkness wants to take you home, Posey. I don't need an escort to walk up a flight of stairs. Oh, I mean to your real home, Cousin Posey. Uh, back to his ma, so she can raise you the way she sees fit, Posey. Well, we're blood relations, uh, Cousin Posey. And your sister made me give a promise. And I'm going to keep that promise. Now, you come on. Oh, he's a loony, Mr. Tim. Tell him to go away. You heard the lady, Cousin Harkness? Look, I already told you I'd give a promise. 
And my ma's skin me alive if I broke my word to family. Get out, you trail bummer. I'll have you thrown out. Well, you got no right to talk to me like that, Mr. Sloan. And no matter what you say, I ain't leaving here without my cousin. Trouble, Mr. Sloan? Get rid of him. For good, Mr. Sloan? No, just whatever you estimate my suit's worth. And you know all my clothing's made to order, and it's got to come all the way out here from New York. But you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. Oh, Mr. Tinny, a suit. Oh. Damn mule-headed idiot. What were you going to do with that girl at once you got her? Put her on the stage and send her home to my mom. I'd give a cousin to burn my word. Well, how you feeling, Mushy? I heard awful. All over. You know, I never knew one man could do so much damage to another. Well, it just wasn't one, one of them. It was three of them, and they kind of pushed me around. Three of them, huh? It sounds like that Sloan fella needs some treeing. Now, whatever you got in your mind, forget it. You heard Mushy. Three of those Jaspers exercised their muscles on him. Mushy went into town and got his face pushed in. I'm sorry about that. I really am. But that is his business, not yours. Well, Mushy belongs to us. And we got a herd to move tomorrow, and we can't do it if half the outfit's laid up from a brawl in town. Well, this is one time the herd will have to wait. There has never been a time the herd has had to wait because one man was fool enough to get into a brawl. This ain't gonna be the first time. Now, you listen to me, all of you. What happened to Mushy is too bad. But you ain't gonna make it any the worse. Now, nobody leaves this camp. That's a flat-out order. Like any other kid. She won't end up like me. What's the matter with you? You had it good. You still love me, Tim? Well, we had a laugh, so let it go at that. We had a little more than that. We got married. That's that's more than just laugh. You're gonna spook her. Put a smile on your face. Tim, please. Put a smile on your face. <laughs> without two coins to rattle against each other in my pocket. All my life I've wanted a place like this, and now I've got it. As fancy and shiny as any place west of Chicago. And I ain't taking no chance on losing it, not the smallest, slightest chance. Rosie can go any time she wants to, after I'm squared with the bank. She's gonna go right now. now. Sit down! Oh. 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 
All right, get her out of here. Slow. I'm busy right now. For Pete's sake, get her out of here. Mr. Sloan, that boy you worked over, you and your friends. Boy, you must be some kind of a brave man, huh? Surprised to see you here. Oh, I'll say the same thing to you. I realize the others ain't got back. Yeah. No, no, this is different. Anybody who lays a hand on Mushy, except me, of course, has got me to answer to. Well, if you'll excuse me. He ought to have enough guts to get into it himself. No, uh -huh, wait a minute. You got this off. Oh. Oh. Drovers from the same drive, my cousin Mushy. Hey, Mushy, yes, uh, ma'am, that's right. That's why we're here. We uh, didn't like Mr. Sloan's way of showing hospitality. Then you come to take the kid. Oh, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, You've got to take her right now. But, uh, Miss Laverne, uh, it, no. Mister, look, I've been told I ain't going to live more than a year. There won't never be no other chance for Posey, so please. Oh, yeah, yeah, but her, her clothing. Uh, right now, before Tim can stop you. with that child. Oh, taking it for biscuits and warm milk or something? Uh, just a nice town. There's a stage line through there. Put me down. Now, she ain't no part of your business. You, you put her down, let her get back to her job. And just be glad you got one to get back to. Mr. Favor. If you're planning to unload your mind, forget it. The kid stays here. I ain't a kid. It isn't going to hurt you one little bit to take this child out of this den of iniquity. Look at her. She's my pretty girl. But she's just barely 15. That's a nice age for a girl. Mr. Favor, take a good look at her. How would you like it if your daughter was in a fix like this a couple of years from now? I wish you'd eat something before you go, Cousin Posey. I ain't hungry. And quit calling me cousin. I can't help our relations. We're relations, and I got to do my best for you. You call this your best? Now, don't take on. We're trying to do what's right for you. If there's anybody can bring you up right and proper, it's my mom. Well, she ain't never gonna get the chance. Now, just get away from me. Please, come on, Cousin Posey. Growing girls gotta eat. Just leave me alone. Ashi? Wishbone give you the day off? No, sir, Mr. Favor. Well, you'd better get back to work. Your cousin wants to act like a spoiled brat. Let her. I ain't a kid, Mr. Favor, and you quit treating me like that. Then one. you stop acting like one. Boy, I'll bet his wife is glad he's away all the time. He ain't got no wife, Cousin Posey. She's dead. Well, what makes him so mean? Mr. Favor? Well, he's supposed to be. He's the boss. Well, he ain't my boss. <laughs> sure doing this the hard way, Mr. Sloan. I tallied up more than 25 rovers out there. 
I'm not interested in 25 drovers, Eric, only one. He's got a lot of friends out there, and they're all on his side. He came to my place with his drovers, left it in a shambles, took away my star attraction. You want me to just forget it? I see what you mean, Mr. Sloan. Only I hope you're figuring out some way of cutting him out of the herd of drovers. Well, he's a trail boss, ain't he? That means he's got to go to town now and then and pick up supplies or get some money from the bank. Or maybe send a telegram. And when he does, he don't take his rovers with him. Someplace, somewhere, Mr. Gilfavor's going to find himself all alone. Picture artist, Mr. Wishbone. All knowing what to do, boy. More to cooking than just making delicious food. It's got to look as good as it tastes. Maybe someday you'll fix a plate like that for me, maybe, huh? You got those wildflowers? Yes, sir, right here. I picked them fresh just like you ordered. Boy, I hope she eats, Mr. Wishbone. My mom'd be worried sick seeing a member of the family starving herself this way. She'll eat the way I fix up a tray. Fixed up a little tray, miss. Mr. Wishbone. Wishbone, you've got hungry men to feed. I never miss serving a meal yet. I'm fine, thank you. It might help, you know, to talk things out. To you? Who could talk to a man like you? Well, I've got a couple of little girls back east who never found it too hard to talk to me. Well, I ain't a little girl. Good night, Mr. It sounded like you might be having a little trouble. I suppose you think I was crying. Was you? What good would it do? I used to cry and never got me nothing. Sometimes it helps. Does it help your two little girls? Well, you wouldn't know about that, would you, Mr. Faber? When was the last time you seen your kids? Yeah, it's been some time. But I write them all the time. They write back. You write them all the time. And what do you write to them, huh? You tell them all about driving beeves and drinking and going to saloons and getting into fights? Well, I write them things I think might be interesting to them, things they might ought to know about. And what do they write to you? Things they think you ought to know about? Sometimes. Oh, who are you trying to kid, Mr. Faber? I know how your kids feel better than you do. Because when my ma died and my pa went away, he left me to be brought up by my aunt. Who's bringing up your kids, Mr. Faber? Their aunt. They got a father walking the earth. Why ain't he raising them? That's the reason I'm working, trying to save enough money pushing these beeves. And then you're going to come back here and you're going to buy yourself a nice spread and bring your kids out here. That's right. Well, I hope they ain't dependent on that, Mr. Faber. Oh, I hope they ain't holding their breath. Now, wait a minute, Posey. Because that's what I thought when my pa went away. That someday he'd be coming back and making us a family again. And for years, I'll wait to get in his letters and promises. And that's all that they was, was just letters and promises. And then even the letters didn't come no more. You know something, Mr. Faber? I don't know where my father is. I don't know whether he's dead or alive. 
And he is so mild, he don't know whether I'm dead or alive. And he don't even care. Lux turning her smiling face. I haven't seen you break out a horse like that first thing in the morning. I need a little breaking out myself. Well, the whole thing's a big mistake, and you can blame me, hmm? You ain't to blame. Neither she. I guess nobody is, except maybe me. I don't know. I just seem to keep saying the wrong things, doing the wrong things. I think you're being a little hard on yourself. That girl to try the patience of a saint. Poor thing. Ain't quite through being a kid yet and starting on being a woman all at the same time. Must be the toughest thing in the world, even for them with gut mothers and fathers looking after them full time. And this kid, well, all she's got stacked against her and me not helping any is rough. <laughs> Lady Luck wasn't smiling hard enough, Mr. Sloan. Too bad. Uh, it can't be long before the trail boat has to go to town. Meanwhile, there's a kind of a pleasure. Just waiting and thinking about it. Good evening, Mr. Favor. I do hope you brought a good appetite. Hmm? Is everything all right? Oh, just about perfect. And the girl? Uh, well, she's just been a little doll all day. Mm. Good, good. Where's the biscuits, Wishbone? What have you been doing all this time? Well, now, you can just do without one time. Besides, you're always saying they're made out of soap peelings and lead. What the devil's wrong now? Well, ask him, Mr. Favor. Ask him what? Well, what is it? Well, look, boss, when a man works like a span of mules all day, well, he's entitled to some decent grub. <coughs> you wouldn't think grown men would make such a fuss over not getting biscuits one time. Why don't you make them? Well, I just didn't feel up to it. You losing your mind, Wish? It wasn't his fault, Mr. Peter. Shut up, Mushy. Mushy? Mushy, you work for me, and I'm ordering you to shut up. Oh, well, uh, Posey? Now, she worked real hard all day, Mr. Favor. Must she? Well, she kind of mixed up the flour with the alkali dirt. And you let her? You losing your eyesight as well as your mind? Please don't scold, Mr. Wishbone. It was all my doing. Well, I don't know what's gotten into me lately. I just haven't been myself, not since Mr. Favor had taken to scolding me so all the time. Oh, but, but I'd make it up to you any way I could, but there ain't very much I can do, except maybe make your evening a little happier after your hard day's work. Huh? <laughs> Rabbit on a hillside, big as a mule. Rabbit on a hillside, big as a mule. Rabbit on a hillside, big as a mule. Skip to my loo, my dog. All right, Little. that's enough. Oh, it's really kind of nice, Mr. Favor. Let her go on. Which one I thought I told you to get into some other clothes. Well, I give them to her, but I couldn't very well put them on her. I'm a girl, Mr. Favor, and I gotta wear girls' clothes. And I told you to take that junk off your face. Are you quite finished with me, Mr. Favor? Yeah. I need to change out of those clothes. Yes, Mr. Favor. Uh, nobody else is hungry, Wish. Hold on. Now you've done it. Now you've really done it. What? What? Scolded her and mishandled her, and now she's gone. She took a horse and rode off into that wild country full of Indians. Oh, fool. 
I'll bring her back, Mr. Favor. Oh, never mind. I'll go after Well, she's my cousin and my responsibility. You're mine. Oh, you go after her. I, I just have to go looking for you, too. I guess he's right. Lady Luck is turning a smiling face. She can help me get what I'm really after. Well. Hey, Posey. Oh, Mr. Tim. Oh, you don't know how good it is to see you. Well, no better than it is to see you, Posey. Oh, it's been awful. You don't know how awful it's been. Yeah, I can well imagine. <laughs> hey, where'd you get this outfit? Oh, look at it. Orders for Mr. Gill Favor. Oh, that man. Didn't get along? Get along. I hate him. Oh, I didn't know there could be so much hate as I feel for this man. Oh, Mr. Tim, take me back. Take me back right now and buy me a new dress. Just let me sing and dance and hear the men tapping their feet. Oh, I just want to forget all about Mr. Gilfavor. Yeah, I'm going to buy you the prettiest dress you ever saw. And shoes with jewels in the heels and a, and a rope of pearls to hang around your pretty neck. Oh, I knew the minute you found me, everything would be all right. <laughs> but before we go, Posey, wouldn't you... Uh, wouldn't you kind of like to get even a little bit with Mr. Favor? Oh, I sure would. But I don't know how. Ah, it'd be simple. You just return to the herd. Go back to Mr. Favor? Just be for a short while. You see, all you got to do is tell him you decided you'd rather go back to your folks after all. Go live with my relatives? Ah, you just be telling them that posy. And then you say to them that uh, you can't stand the, the trail no longer. You know, the dust and the smells and that and... The, couldn't he leave the herd to take you to Kiowa Flats to put you on a stagecoach? No, he'd never do that for me. Ah. Uh, you're a good little actress, Posey. I think you could make him go with you. And if I can, then what? Uh, he jumped me at the Longhorn with all his men. I want to talk to him alone. Man to man. Teach him a lesson. You teach him good, Mr. Tim. For both of us. Had a go. We'll be back. Don't you worry. after me. Yeah, well, I was worried about you. You were worried I go back to Mr. Tim. Oh, just worried. Just ain't no place to be out alone at. You woke up this morning and you missed me and you got scared for me and you came after me. That's the way it was, wasn't it, Mr. Favor? Well, I was a little mad, too. Seeing I was my time I'd have to spend looking for you. But I ain't mad no more. Especially seeing you come back. I guess you learned your own lesson. Best way to learn. <laughs> Yes, I learned my lesson just fine, Mr. Paver. Mr. Paver? Can you do something for me? Why, sure, sure I can. You've been making me understand a lot of things I never realized before. Like the proper way for a person to live. And I want to go home to Mushy's Mall. That's why I was coming back to you. Well, I'm real glad to hear that. As soon as we reach Kiowa Flats, fine. How long would that be? Oh, four or five days. Uh, it's just riding with a herd, all that dust and them smells. It ain't much of a place for a lady to be. Do you think maybe we could ride ahead to Kiowa Flats? Well, yeah. Say, I'll, I'll take you in myself. Oh, I'm putting you to an awful lot of trouble, ain't I, Mr. Favor? No, I, I got business in town. Be just as well I get there a few days ahead of the herd. Tell you what, we get a good night's sleep tonight. Start out first thing in the morning, right? All right. 
Miss you, Posey, but maybe when we finish this drive, we'll all get back to Texas and get together again. Uh, I hope so, Mr. Wishbone. Well, uh, the boys and me, we, well, we kind of feel you belong to us now, and, well, we want you to get back into the world looking all pretty and nice, so, well, we kind of all chipped in and... Why are you looking at me like that? Like what, Posey? That smile, like you're laughing inside. Are you laughing at me? Of course I ain't laughing at you. Just smiling. There's a big difference, you know. Yeah, well, what kind of difference? Well, uh, uh, the difference of you being out of that spangled dress, which was 10 years too much for you. Face all cleaned up, hair pulled back like that. Yeah, like a kid, you're trying to say. Being a kid, that ain't a bad word, you know. It ought to be a pretty good time of your life. Well, I wouldn't know. You know, I'm, I'm really beholden to you. Beholden for what? Well, I, I don't know if I can find the words for it right or not. Well, it's... Well, I miss my kids. Miss them real bad. You see, I know I ain't, I ain't the kind of a father I should be funny just having you around it's helped some mr favor you know maybe i oughtn't be doing this taking you away from your work and all well listen why don't we go back and go with the herd now wait till we get to kiwa flats now that's something you got to learn right now once you make up your mind you stick to it jumping around all the time changing that's nice part of growing up You ain't gonna start a fire, are you? Ah, it's getting a little brisk. Well, maybe it'll draw somebody here. Indians, maybe. No, oh, I have no Indians anywhere near here. You just relax. A few minutes, we'll have some hot coffee to go with wishbone sandwiches. Now, he really outdid himself for you. There we go. We'll not be out before long. Get moving again. I don't reach Kiowa Flats long, but daylight. But the time stores will be opening up. You ain't too tired from traveling all night. Maybe we can start getting you outfitted. Take it easy with that. You'll put it out. No, no, I'll get it. Who? Oh, Mr. Peter. Oh, I hurt you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You blessed. Oh, I didn't mean to do it, Mrs. Fave. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I could die if I could only die. Oh, oh. Get me the canteen, quick. Oh. Mr. Fave, let's get back to the herd. Please, let's get back right now and I'll take care of you. I'll nurse you every minute till they get better. Please, let's get back to the herd. Oh. Does it hurt bad? Well, it not only hurt, I can't see. Are you satisfied now? It was an accident. I swear to you, it was an accident. Let's get accident. back to the Accident? Like... Emptying the water bills and salt in the flow with alkaline? Oh, you don't think I did this on purpose? I don't know whether you did or not. All I know is wherever you are, there's trouble. I didn't, Mr. Faber. I swear to you, I didn't do it on purpose. We got to get back to the herd now, right now, please. Oh, go to Kiowa Flats as a doctor. No, no, listen. If you, if you only believe me, I swear to you, this was an accident. Please. All right, all right, forget it. No, no, but I did something worse. Oh, much worse. What did you do now? Big Tim. What about him? Oh, he's around here somewhere. See, that's what I was doing. I was leading you to him. Well, let's get back to the herd. Put out that fire. All the way I wanted Put to... Put the fire out! Fire's out. We can find him now. Yeah, but why is it out? 
Are you sure you can trust that kid? She's on my side, Eric. I hope you're right, Mr. Sloan. I hope this isn't a double cross. That trail boss is a rough man. You turn and yellow, Herrick? Oh, no, Mr. Sloan. Then shut up. Where do you see Tim Sloan? When I ran away from you yesterday, I ran into him. He's following you. Oh, Mr. Faber, I was so mad at you for being mean to me. So you agreed to leave me here to be killed? Killed? Well, what do you think? Oh, no, Mr. Faber. Mr. Mr. Tim, he just wanted to have it out with you. Oh, sure, sure. You don't believe me? Mr. Faber, I don't want to see you killed. You know, I didn't have to tell you nothing. All right, all right. I believe you, Posey. How many of them are there? Two. Mr. Tim and Herrick. Oh, Mr. Faber, all the time that I was with you on the drive, all I could think about was Mr. Tim and the longhorn and dancing and singing. And then when I was with him yesterday, all I could think of was you and Mushy and Wishbone. Oh, God. oh, I guess I'm a dumb kid. I don't know what I want. Posey! Posey! Posey, can you hear me? No, Mr. Tim! No! You come over here, Posey. I don't want you to get hurt. No, no, listen, Mr. Tim. He can't see. He's blind. What are you saying, Posey? I did it. I did it getting sparks in his eyes. It was an accident. You can't do nothing to him now. It's funny, Mr. Sloan. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> you ain't a gambler, Herrick. When the lady smiles, she smiles. Posey! No, Mr. Tim, no, you can't hurt a man who can't see. <laughs> that figures. A man who'd hide behind his drovers in a fight would hide behind a woman. I'm gonna kill you, trail boss. Don't make no difference to me whether you can see or not. Now, Posey, you get out of the way. No! You make a move, trail boss, unless you don't care whether she gets hurt, too. Told you it was a brain! Mr. Tim? Mr. Tim? You framed me, Posey. Oh, no, no, I didn't, Mr. Tim. You lied to me. Posey, I wouldn't have believed it of you. No, I didn't. I didn't lie to you. Mr. Fink, he's that awful bad and he thinks that I framed him. Come and tell him I didn't lie to him. Please. Come on, he thinks I framed him. You tell him I didn't lie to him. She didn't lie. I can't see, but I can hear. Oh. You hear too good, trail boss. Laverne's done her share of worrying about you, Posey. Now you worry about her. Mr. Faber. Oh, he was Laverne's husband. Now what's she gonna do? I don't know who to thank more. Cousin Mushgrove for coming and getting me, or, or Mr. Favor for sending him. Sorry, I know how you must feel. You know, for the first time in my life, I... I want to be like all the women I've ever despised. Well, maybe I didn't really despise them. Maybe I just thought I... that I could never be like them. Well, now I know I can. When I get back home, I'm gonna feel a lot better. Well, you get some of my ma's cooking, you'll feel like a new human being. Cousin Posey, you are a little doll, isn't she, Mr. Favor? I see nothing pretty. You can see, can't you, Mr. Favor, just as well as before. No, oh, when I got through doctoring him, he could see better than ever. You were right. Being a kid's kind of fun, getting all these pretty things and everything. Yeah, well, you better get moving, then. Miss your stage. But I ain't gonna be a kid forever. Two or maybe three years, and then I'm coming back to look for you. And a man who travels with two and three thousand head of cattle ain't going to be very hard to find. I'll be back. Just you wait. 
Wait. Oh, she's just a kid. She doesn't know what she was saying. <laughs> Some kid. You think she will come back? <laughs> I know. What? Mostly hard work, doing without, being alone. It's warming yourself in a rainstorm with no fuel but buffalo chips. Spreading your duds on an anthill to get up the vermin. It's being and doing things that don't rightly ask two-legged humans, unless they're cowboys. Add discipline and loyalty to list, all for $30 a month. It's a big strain on man. You have to expect something to give along the way and bust wide open. I'm in a position to know. I'm a favor, trail boss. I tell you, the wind was blowing so strong, this friend of mine, he had a $20 gold piece, and he got swooped up. And when he came down, he looked at that 20 I'll be done if it hadn't turned to two 50-cent pieces of plug nickel. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Jaspers? I told that story and be ten times, it's always good for a laugh. Getting mighty hard to amuse. Maybe nobody feels as funny. Maybe there's nothing to laugh at. You think Niosha was Kansas City or St. Louis or something? <sighs> Maybe it ain't much of a town. It was a place to go, something to do. Something to do? Keep you busy all night. And that's picking the teeth out of the back of your throat. Eat off, Brad. Sit down, Roddy. Two whole days and nothing to do but take a long swim at the sun or a quick nap in the shade. It's enough to drive a guy out of his mind. We busted her and got across a good horse for the thing. That devil river's going to take a lot of busting, Mr. Nolan. Are you trying to work a hoodoo to get us over on the side? You fool, that wrangler. Don't ever come bulging in on a skittery herd like that. Huh? The smell of water's nagging at him. We're keeping him thirsty. How come? Oh, you're pitiful, Yank. You see, by the time the river goes down, these cattle will be so bone dry, they'll be rushing to get in that water. We won't have to push so hard to get them across. Mm. You know, Seems plain unreasonable to keep everyone from going into town. As long as we're laid up anyhow. Boy, you're getting mighty breachy. Everybody sapping at everybody else. Don't let that be your worry, Boston. Mr. Favor has reasons. Good reasons. Guess so. Say, Mr. Noel, how long do you think it would take a low-down horse rider like me to, well, to be a top rider like you? Well, the world got created in six days. You might make it in six. Thanks. Years. Now get that thing out of here, Jesse, and don't make me tell you again. You're not turning this chuck wagon into a black cart. You ain't so hard as you make up to be wishful. Only thing hard about you is them biscuits you put out. Look at her. She's nothing but a rack of bones. I'm not going against Mr. Favor's orders. There's enough raw feelings in this outfit already. Now look, just who cares about Mr. Favor? Take it. Calves have got no cash value. Nothing but bother. All their maws always bawling after them, riling up the herd. Either shoot them or beat them for grub. Well, oh, not little old buttermilk. Now, look. Wishbone, you're gonna take good care of little buttermilk. You're gonna keep her warm and safe and out of sight. 
Now you go ahead and rustle up some milk so she don't start missing her mammy. Now you hear me? Now go on. Overgrown lummox. <laughs> You was born no more to me. <laughs> Ain't no reason why you should suffer for it. Uh, I know. Good evening, gentlemen. I trust we're welcome. And then, gentlemen. Let's not have so much formality. On your feet, Lieutenant. Tension! <laughs> Force of habit, gentlemen. What do you want, Millet? Perhaps I should explain. Lieutenant Favor served under me during the last stages of the recent conflict. How have you been, my good friend? Fine. Till now. I should be offended. You knew my family owned half this county, including the town of Nyota, and yet you kept your men away as though it harbored a fade. Doesn't it? What in the world could you possibly mean, Mr. Faber? I think this ex-colonel here knows my meaning. I think I do. I need every hand I've got to get this herd to Sedalia. I was under the impression the institution of slavery was abolished. I thought even sonners were free to come and go as they pleased. Was I wrong in that, gentlemen? Your Lord and Master here knows that I'm recruiting men of stout hearts to reestablish the Confederacy and a way of life that's dear to every southerner worthy of the name. These men are trying to forget the war. You're wasting your breath. Suppose. We let them decide. Allow me to present Miss Narcissa Adams, gentlemen. The lady has some literature that may awaken your dead pride. You're just a little weaning, aren't you? You make it mighty interesting, ma'am. Even for a Yankee. Uh -huh. You're anything but a little weanling. You're a man. I'm mindful that some of you may be lacking in formal education. So, if you'll allow me, your court destiny, join the new confederacy of Panama. If you are a southerner and refuse to crawl under Yankee arrogance and oppression, adventure and wealth await you. Plantations in a tropical paradise, willing natives to serve. Fifty gold dollars when you sign up. Arms and uniforms furnished free. Signed, Colonel Warren Millet, first emperor of the Confederacy of Panama. Headquarters, Nyosha, Texas. You've had your say, Millet. Now take this woman and get out. One final word. Think to your future, men. There's nothing here for you but jackrabbit stew and mesquite beans. Paltry trailways you'll leave behind in some northern railhead and you're back where you started from, broke. You were leaving, Millet. Come, my dear. It's 
plenty of the right kind of excitement in Irish, boy. And plenty of liquor, if you should decide to talk things over. Nice and exciting picture, huh, Miss Perry? If you're portal to pipe dreams. You know how many ranches south of the Nueces are depending on us to get their brands to market. I can't force you to stay. But if I find any man preaching around camp, using this for a text, he's got a fight on his hands. Look, boy, I don't read so good, but it's... Everything that the colonel said, is that all written down here? Yes. Just like he said. It is, is it? It is. like there's places further south than south, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colonel, I, I, I've been reading this thing real careful, like, but there's just one thing I want to know. Yes, Mr. Childress. Well, is it true, like you say, that wherever this place is or whatever name it goes by, that if a man goes there, he can be what he wants to be? Is that true? Is it true? Of course it's true, Jesse. That's exactly what Colonel Mellet wants you to understand. Oh. oh. You're real thoughtful of me, Miss Narcy. Go on. Think up to the power and the glory. A good drink dries up all the foolish, dull, and cruddy vapors of ironing the brain. It illumines the face and impels the heart to deeds of courage. Oh, Colonel, you said that real pretty. So did someone else before me. Well, Mr. Childress, if you have any other questions, Miss Nasty will be glad to answer them, I'm sure. Uh-huh. I have some business downstairs in the saloon. Well, that's all right, girl. That's all right. What's the matter, Jesse? Huh. You want to know something? I can't even read. I can't understand half of what the colonel says with all them fancy words. You know, I've never seen a round map like that before in my whole life. Jesse, you just believe me. None of that is the full measure of a man. Oh, it is. It's what you have in your heart to make of yourself. Go on. If you listen to Colonel Milt, you'll be a leader worthy of anybody's respect. Uh, yours? Any woman's. Go on talking, Miss Narcy, and promising things. You know, Miss Narcy, I, I could listen to you forever. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Last call for breakfast! Oh, come on now! Give me a hat! All right, rise and shine, you life pit tracks! Everybody up, rise and shine!
out of this. She's a fine son lady. Guess you didn't believe me last night, Jess. You mean just you and me? Tooth and claw? <laughs> he means just him and me. Tooth and claw. <laughs> shouldn't have said nothing about Miss Narcy. She's a, a fine southern lady. I heard you the first time, Jesse. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. I didn't mean to hurt you so much. But Miss Narcy is a fine southern lady. Oh, there's one more thing you're going to be real sore at me about. That little old calf, you, you asked me to go out and kill it? Well, trail rules are no trail rules. I, I just didn't have the heart. So I'm, I'm taking her with me. Yes, sir. Get the herd started. You don't mean that, Mr. Favor. I was afraid of something like this. I can't risk losing even one more man on fool's bait. Well, that river's still big swimming. We could lose a lot more than just a herd. Don't argue. Saddle your horses. The best mounts from the Remuda. We're going across the river. Anybody can't swim, say so now. You can ride across with the wagons. I'll make it all right, Mr. Favor. All right. Let's roll. <laughs>
losing cattle fast. I'm back. Couldn't find his body. Only last night he asked me how long it'd take him to be a top hand. We won't ever know that now, will we, Mr. Favor? It's gonna be tough writing his folks. I don't even know if he had a name. Never that close to him. Don't even know his real name. Just Boston. Why didn't the fool kid say he couldn't swim? You remember Fredericksburg? Remember how those Yanks kept trying to come over that stone wall at the foot of Mary Heights? We felt ashamed shooting them down, but they kept coming. Well, I reckon Northerners got their pride, too. Going somewhere? I was wrong what you done today, Mr. Favor. I can be wrong. The Yankee boy. Things like that could happen on any crowd, but we shouldn't have even tried it. You got more to say? You let mud booger you into it. I saw the way you looked at those handbills, the way you looked at the woman. It wasn't hard to read your minds. Maybe you were right. So we're joining up with the Colonel. You found the excuse you were looking for. That's the way you put it. You won't feel good about it for long. Tomorrow, maybe next day. We'll think it over. You won't be able to look each other in the eye. I'll be in Nyosha tomorrow, just in case. The best recruit now, sister. Welcome, volunteer. Reporting for orders, Colonel. My best order is to commission you in the rank of captain. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Captain Childress, carry on. Attention! Right shoulder arm. Right face. Right face. Four by four. Four by four. Four it by the trap. Lieutenant. The war is over. The name is Favor. If you hadn't come, I would have requested the honor of your presence. Why? I still think I can interest you in the new Confederacy of Panama, if I make tempting enough. There's only room for one emperor. Double time, fire! We can't go on like this. We've had enough. Something on your mind, Mayor Hayslip? I've seen this town all through the war. I helped keep it alive. What we want is peace and a chance to build it up. You won't let us. Did you dismiss this man, Captain Childress? I'll kill anybody that tries to stop me from saying my piece. You, you keep at us about living high on a hog, somewhere in a jungle, a place no one ever heard of. You got all these people stirred up, drilling and marching, when they ought to be working. And now you're bringing in these cowboys. 
What do you got stewing around in that crazy mind of yours? I... Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Just run him out, Captain. I'll go. With you here, the town ain't worth living. He won't show his face in town again. Have your men store their arms in the arsenal, Captain? Arsenal? Oh, you mean the livery stable. <laughs> All right, men, stack your arms in a livery stable. Hurry! Then you can adjourn to the saloon. A little self-indulgence is good for the spirit. What you looking at Fave like that for? A lady tries to be gracious under all circumstances, Jesse. You ain't never gonna look no man again like that. Understand? Why, you... You mustn't be silly, Jesse. Understand? We could talk matters over in my quarters over the saloon, but that hardly seems fitting. You still think we have something to talk about? Why don't you have dinner with me at my plantation house? Plantation? Oh, the wrong name, perhaps, in this dreary country. But it happened to be an exact replica of the Tidewater Mansion my grandfather built in Virginia. I think I will take you up on that. The mayor said something I'd like to know more about. Good. I'll expect you at seven. The millet place is on the other side of town. You can't miss it. It looms up on the prairie like a mirage. But it's very real. A fading symbol of gracious life, now vanished from the earth. Lieutenant. Most welcome. I've been waiting. Mr. Favor. Nice to see you. Won't you come in, please? Zachariah. Yes, Miss Narcy. Finish your song for Mr. Faber.
Where's Millet? If I know him, and I should, he's up there polishing his medals. Or just looking back the time when he was really something. Isn't he anymore? You know better. I didn't think you did. Oh, Gil, please do it for me. I need you. He isn't man enough for a job as big as this. All he's good for is talking and strutting. You could make it all come true. Emperor? There are plenty of ways of getting rid of him once we get down here. Oh, Gil, it could be paradise. Best argument so far. But I still could be another Jesse Childress. Why, you? <laughs> I warned you, Narcissa. He's incorruptible. You spoke to my men about pride. What's happened to yours? Most of my pride was signed away at Appomattox. What I have left, I don't permit to stand between me and what I want. You two make quite a team. A penny, Andy Carlotta, and Maximilian. Now let's use a direct approach. The mayor was right today. I have something planned. Something of immediate importance. Go on. I need men like your cowboys. All I can get. Mostly, I need you. Find your own way to pen them off. You must have math. Money. That's what keeps men loyal. Is it? I'm down to none. But I know where there's gold for the taking. Fort Stock. The army paymaster arrived today. Money for the forts and the territory. The garrison's practically empty. The cavalry's out of the state plains tracking on Santanta. A lightning raid will do it no trouble at all. Just like that. If you leave them favor. This is the sort of thing you do best, I know. When it's done, we'll cross Rio Grande, down the coast through Mexico. We won't even have to fight, we'll buy our way. You'll sit at my right hand, Pippa, when we reach our goal. You're out of your mind. Enough of that. This game you're playing in this dead house. At my right hand, Pippa. Cutting up a down, booted and spurred, trading on party with wild promises. This isn't Virginia. You, Claude, you fool. A man's only as good as his dream. I gave you your chance. We were like the others. Just plant in the mud. I don't need you. I'll get that money tomorrow myself. But you stay with your cows. You try to interfere with me and I'll kill you. Nobody turns his back on me. I'm Warren Millet, Emperor of Panama. Yeah, what is ready? Well, what about, uh, what uh, about what? Well, what about the Colonel, Mr. Weber? And, uh, well, she was a real beautiful woman. The Colonel plans to attack a United States fort tomorrow with our men. He's broke. He's got it all figured out. The cavalry will be out chasing Santanta. According to the Colonel, all he'll have to do is rush the fort, and he's got enough money for everybody to live happily ever after. He's got our men believing that? You didn't see him drill. He talks to him, she just looks at him. He's got him believing that anything that happens to him is the best thing that ever happened to him. Well, I'm in the favor. They're your drovers. Yeah, I know that. Come on, Fox. Roddy. Yeah. Come back here. Yeah? What do you have in mind? You let me go in the house, Mr. Favor. He makes one move and... You won't have any trouble anymore. No, Roddy. The answer's not in that house. Talk to me. Me, 
Stop shouting. My Gil Favors got more mad than one little finger than your whole family line since John Smith and Pocahontas. Stop it! Just look at yourself, an overdressed windbag. Just look at this place. Stop it, I say! You're not telling me anything. You're not high tone rich and almighty anymore. I'm surprised Favor didn't laugh in your face. You can say these things to me. I picked you up from nothing. It was the most elegant saloon in New Orleans, and I could have married half a dozen men who could buy and sell you. No more of this. I'm tired. And I'm through. I'm leaving. No! You can't. You're letting something big slip right through your fingers, and all your words and shouting can stop it. Master, don't leave me. Say you won't, please. Will you lead that raid on the fort tomorrow yourself? Yes. A man only as good as his dream. My own words, weren't they? You can do it. Believe me, you can. Of course I can. Huh. Why did I even bother with favor? <laughs> We've no time to waste after what you told him. He's not going back and just tend his cows. What? Don't you see? He'll be going back to Nyosha. He's going to try to get those men away from you. You'll need them tomorrow. You're right. You're always right, Mrs. Sir. I'll tell Zachariah to hitch up the buggy. come along and shake them down. And all we gotta do is sell them for Yankee dollars. What's the matter with that, Brad? <laughs> I know cattle, I know buffaloes, and I know horses. I still don't know what's a banana. Come on, Buster, strike up another tune. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse take good care of little buttermilk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And Jesse always take good care of Miss Narcy. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, I know. You go on back and have a good sleep. Huh? You have a good sleep. your word count, Warren. Don't tell them it has to be done. Don't even mention the fort. Let them find out about that when it's too late to turn back. I know how to handle men, my dear. Of course you do. That's what I mean. Make them swear by you so that nobody can turn them aside. You don't need anybody but yourself. Nobody but you. 
This is your moment. I'll wait for you upstairs. Nossi. Why aren't you downstairs with the others? I've been wanting to see you alone, but you wouldn't let me. Jesse, there's no time to talk about us. Oh, Miss Narcy, I've always been scurry around ladies, but with you it's different. Why, you didn't think I was a big clumsy ox, did you? Miss Narcy, when are we gonna get married? You as good as promised. You know, Miss Narcy, you're, you're just everything there ain't no words for. I remember when I was a kid, standing out front of that one-room lousy shack that I grew up in, looking out across Matagord Bay. And the sky and the water was so clean. I was always looking looking for something that there just wasn't no words for. But when I first seen you, Miss Narcy, I know exactly what I was looking for. Let go of me. I can't stand the sight of you. Oh, don't say that. You're worse than an animal. Well, all them things you said to me, they didn't mean nothing. Why did you say them things? Because Colonel Millet needed you to get the others. Don't say no more! I'm all mixed up. I, I gotta scheme things out. I gotta understand. Nobody understands what goes on inside me. Nobody cares. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. Here's to the new confederacy of Panama. The hour has struck at us. Just what is going to happen tomorrow, Colonel? You never did tell us right up. You'll get your orders from Captain Childress. Oh, yes. Somebody go find him. Tell him to join me upstairs. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Faber? Can't you get your steer across the Devil River? What do you want? I didn't come here to make a speech. So I'm gonna get the chance. But I thought you all ought to know what you've gotten yourselves into. You're going on a madman's picnic tomorrow. You don't... <laughs> Guess that means that you're gonna be taking orders from me from now on. Ain't that right, Miss Narcy? Go on! Tell him I'm a better man than he ever was. He's just been giving you promises. I'll give you action. That's what you want, ain't it? No more marching. No more parading. You follow me and you... What's the matter? 
Ain't I a better man than he was? Why don't somebody say something? There's nothing more to be said, Jesse. You ain't gonna turn on me. I won't let you. Now get back, all of you. Get back there. You should have been, you'll kill her. I guess I. Don't you dare try to drop. Get out of here. Come in up to you, Jess. Roddy, keep everybody out here. I never asked for none of this, Mr. Baylor. Please don't blame me. No. No, who's going to take care of little old buttermilk? Huh? <laughs> Death is the man taking names. Take a name. Death is the man taking names. Will he took my master's name and has left my heart in pain? Yes, death is the man. Build a sedalia, Missouri, from day to day. You fall into the habit of trying to read your men. Guess what makes them think? But don't make much headway. It isn't easy to figure grown up humans who take this kind of a life at 30 bucks a month and keep. So you finally give up. And you're just glad there's a breed like them get the beeves to where they're going. I got a good reason to be glad. My name's Gil Favor. Trail us. Pete, you're the only one that's out there that knows how to sew right. No doubt about that. Oh, I don't know. I've been working on this thing for about two days. All I seem to get is a thumb that looks like a sieve. Help me. Help me. Somebody help me. Please, won't somebody help me? He's up there. I'll be all right. You've got to get him. He's out there. Oh. Pete, Rowdy, take a look around out here. See if you see anybody. Be careful. Wishbone, medicine chest.
gunshot wound. Not too bad. But she's lost a lot of blood. Don't you help? Easy. Men will help. Now lie still. Don't try to talk. They'll kill him. They? My husband made us right away. While he held them off. Oh, please! It is just. It'd be a waste of water now, Mr. Faber. What's first thing in the morning, you and Scott the grave? Yes, sir. No sign of anybody out there. Pete, how much tracking could you do at this time of night? Hardly any. Well, I'll make a marker. What name shall I put on it? You didn't say. Nobody ought to be laid to rest without a name. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. This will be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wish, how do you think she got shot, anyway? Oh, probably a stray. The rifle slug. Didn't go very deep, so it was nearly spent. What was that? Sound like a baby. Oh, not out here. Well, let's find it. Just squat there, pick it up. Huh? Oh, oh, pick it up. No, you, you pick it up, Wish. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, it's just a little. So that's what you want us to hunt for last night. Is it all right? Don't ask me. Oh, oh, no. Sounded healthy enough. She must have seen our fire and had enough strength to carry it on in. Well, at least she tried to put it where the snakes and coyotes wouldn't get it. If eat you, you better try and backtrack that woman. You come on back when you can. Right. Hey, now, you fellas. Who's gonna take this thing? Now, Miss Faber, who's gonna take care of this thing? Oh, no, not me. I gotta draw the line somewhere. Oh, I wish we were too young to be riding a horse. Oh, no, now, absolutely not. I got every extra job there is now. Boom, wishbone. Well, I figure you're the only man in this whole outfit who's smart enough to be able to handle a thing like that. Mr. Faber, I don't mind being the blacksmith or even the barber, but there's one thing I'm not, and I'm not gonna be, and that's a mother. Now, you take this cub right now. We'll drop it off at the next town. The next? Why, that's two weeks from now. Mother did. Father did, too, probably. But we'll find someone to take it off your hands. Off of my hands, two weeks. You get somebody else to take this right now. No! Say, Wish. What kind is it anyway? Boy or girl? 
It's a boy. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I don't know the first thing about taking care of babies. And I'm not going to start learning at my age. No, sir. That's one thing I'm not going to do. Here, you take it. Sure, Mr. Wishbone. No, no. I wouldn't wish you on anything. Not even this. Found a dead horse. Couldn't find any sign beyond that. Ground's all rocky and hard. Hey! How's everything? You can't see. Oh, come on, wishbone. Have a heart. I've been out on a long ride. All right. One quick one. enough. Beat. Got a rider in sight. Yeah. Too many had to be wild stock. Yeah. Like making a gold strike. An arrowhead brand. Yeah, I never heard of it. Looked a trail map this morning. There's no ranch, no town, nothing around here. I don't walk off and leave this any head in the middle of nowhere. Not the matches. Well, we'll throw in with our herd. When it comes along, we can come out for him. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Business will be booming in a short while, boys. Get everything ready. Still doctoring him, Reese. How's the shoulder, Harry? Still bleeding. A couple of inches over, and we'd have buried you, too. Weren't such a good idea to pitch A.B. Kincaid at Jim. The other's still be alive if we hadn't. We had no choice. He had the sick cattle. Anyway, we don't have to bother about him anymore, do we? Well, what's eating you, Reese? Oh, why'd you have to wait till I was out of camp before you went on that raid? I didn't want you with us. Why not? Figured you might be crazy enough to try and take him all by yourself. Well, I just thought like, maybe I could. J.B. Kincaid? His reputation don't scare me none. <laughs> yeah, well, it did me. You're always boasting how fast I am. Not that fast. As it was, we left three out of 15 men at his ranch, and four more needed doctrine. No, sir. I can't afford to run the risk of losing you. Reese, you're the only family I got. <laughs> Besides, the next move is yours anyway. Yeah, the trail had picked up those sick cattle just like we planned. He ought to be ripe just about now. So get ready to pay him a little visit. Wait a minute, all the real doings could be right here. That herd has got to be set up. Oh, I don't feel like play-acting a part of no gun hand just for 
Some stupid tray boss. Well, they aren't all the stupid. You might just have a little more to do than play acting. Trail boss? No. Nope. Well, who is? Mr. Fuller! Howdy. I'm J.B. Kincaid. You a favor? Name mean anything to you? Yeah, I reckon it does. Wood gets around. Here, uh, you get a few men to credit. Well, that's all in the pack now. I've turned to rancher. I had 50, 60 head of cattle up there on the trail. You ever hit Brand? Well, how did you know? I had a couple of men herding them. Well, we seen your steers, Mr. Kincaid, but uh, there's nobody with them. You saw them? I thought they'd run off. I'll have my boys cut them out for you. We picked them up. You picked them up? That's right. Well, mine's a sick herd, Mr. Faber. Ticks. Spanish fever. Spanish fever, there's good gone already. One of those steers of yours will be dead within three days unless you get them dipped. Ruddy! Quiz! Scarlet! Ash! Cut out those arrowhead pants. Take the fever. Come out fast. I'll give him a hand. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Fair. You're sorry. You know what those sticks can do to word? In 72 hours. Tongue swapping their mouths the size of balloons. They begin to thunder and thresh around. All of a sudden, they swell up to the size of elephants. That's when they keel over and die. 72 hours from now, I have 3,000 carcasses in my hands, and you're sorry. I had no idea. I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, they're just little ticks as far as I knew. You left a herd with Spanish fever all alone. I told you I left two men with them. I had no idea they'd run off and leave the cattle. You must have known more about Spanish fever than you did. 72 hours from now, I ought to make you watch those cattle go down. I ought to force you to watch them. It didn't make you crawl away. Look, I had no choice. I rode on ahead to the danger field dips to arrange to have my cattle dipped. That's the only way to save them, ain't it? Seems to me that a thousand miles around here, all the cattle got ticks. Mine didn't. Till now. Checking our steers. And? Didn't see a one without ticks. Looks like my steers got 72 hours before they get dipped. I sure wish I could do something, Mr. Faber. You can. Show me where that danger field dip is. How far off is it? Well, it's about 20 miles. You can make it in three days. Three days is the most we got. Spanish fever can act in two days in the heat. And it's hot. Get him up! Move on! You spreading here, Mr. Kincaid? About 10 miles north. You must have been until recently. That's right. Hey, uh... You know, good-looking woman, dark-haired, about uh, 35. What's her name? Huh? I say, what's her name? We don't know. I'd like to meet a good-looking woman. We uh, buried this one recently. Oh, I'm sorry. She left her baby with us, fed it down in the truck wagon. Just thought you might know skin. Oh, I wouldn't be likely to get a good-looking woman if I seen her. Just a hope. Through the middle.
Mr. Kincaid, he should make an impression, don't he? Not on me, he don't. Any man can ignore a handsome baby like this. Just don't stand high in my regard. I guess he's as good as his reputation. Mm. Well, say, Pete, how far you figure this will be Wells? It's about 30 miles. Mm. All right. I want you to write into Dobie Wells, ask around. If you can't find any kin, we'll find somebody who knew the family and take care of the baby. Wishbone! Mr. Favor, I've been thinking hmm? my steers are in your herd. I like to pull my own weight. I'd like to take a turn from night herd. Fair enough. Uh, Pete's the first guard. You can take over from the ten. Well, uh... Yeah? I was wondering. Mm -hmm. I ain't much sleep right now. If it's all the same to you, I'll take the first turn. Suit yourself. Those three steers are taking about finished, Mr. Fur. Well, we're just lucky it wasn't 50. Shoot him. Get him underground as quick as you can. Yes, sir. Mr. Wishbone, you can't feed this milk to the baby. Why not? Well, the cow's got ticks. It's got the fever, just like the rest of the herd. You sure? Yes, sir. You can go check the cow yourself. What do we do? Well, there's one thing we can't do. Is bother Mr. Favor about it. He's got enough problems. Well, your mother knew so much about the powder, maybe she knew something about this. Sugar water. Well, all right, we'll give it a try. Maybe after Ash gets back, it won't be our worry no more. Mr. Kincaid, anything happened? No, no, Mr. Favor just changed his mind. He doesn't want you to ride to Dobie Wells. <laughs> Looking for me? Well, yeah, I couldn't find it. I figured maybe your horse spooked through you. <laughs> no. I spotted the coyote trail on the edge of the herd, so I drove him off into the hills. You, yeah. I'll be glad to get them a blanket roll tonight. the night for lack milk. A milk cow's got tits. Sure wish we knew where we could get some clean milk. Hey, there's some on the prairie. Are you talking in riddle, Pete? No, I mean a wishbone. I cut fresh buffalo sign on the way in here. How far was that, Pete? About two miles. Wishbone, you tell that baby milk's about ready to be delivered. And, uh, where are you going? Oh, uh, I figured I'd milk me a buffalo cow. You what? Yeah, well, uh... Well, uh, look, we're moving this herd along in an hour. You figure you got time to find a buffalo and milk it? Eat your morning meal and uh, be ready to kick this uh, herd along in an hour? Well, I... I figured I'm passing on the morning meal. Well, then, as long as you're ready when we are. You mean as long as uh, Mama Buffalo's ready? <laughs> I 
Now listen, all of you. We've got to get these steers dipped by tomorrow, or we don't have a steer left. Now once we mount up, you're going to stay in those saddles if I got a tie you in until we reach the danger hill dip. The only rest you're going to get from now until then is when the herd needs it. All right, Wishbone, beat them up. Line up. to milk that buffalo a bracelet. I seen less beat up things come out from under a rock. <laughs> Ash is dead. Oh. Gunshot. His gun wasn't even out of the holster. Any idea who did it? Oh, I don't have any idea who did it. A lot of tracks around there, though. You may, Pete may be able to track them down for you. No. We can't just forget about it. We'll have to for now. After the cattle are dipped, we can find out what happened. The trail's gonna be cold by then. And the cattle will be dead by then, unless we keep kicking them along. And we need every drover. Give him a hand. Why don't you get his horse? I drive my wife to your camp. It was a woman came into our kit a little while back. My wife. She had her baby. Where is she? Oh. Ready. Who are you, mister? My name is Kincaid. It's not too common a name. We've already got a man here who says his name's Kincaid. Who, him? Did he call himself Kincaid? J.B. Kincaid. That's what he said. He's a liar and a murderer. You heard the man accuse you. What do you say? I'm Reese Dangerfield. This bunch raided my ranch. Airhead brand cattle? Mine. You know that herd was sick? Went to Dangerfield and his brother wanted my cattle dipped. They propositioned me to use them to infect a big trail herd. I turned them down and raided me to get my cattle. Where's my wife? She did. Let me kill him! He killed my wife! Where's my baby? He's in the supply wagon, alive and well. Wishbone, show him. You must have killed Ash. You left a herd last night. I couldn't find you. I told you I was chasing a coyote. 
He lied about his name. He lied about killing Ash Tool. Mister, you're going to swing. Not the ones to swing anybody. Yeah, your boss is the only one with their brains. Anything happens to me, you can forget about your herd getting to Sedalia. Keep talking. Well, uh, Dangerfield Dip is the only one within 200 miles. If we don't agree to dip your cattle, you're going to die. Now, you feel just how agreeable my brother's going to be if anything happens to me. We'll take real good care of him, then. His being healthy may be the only way to save the herd. And don't let Kinby near him. At least until I get back. Where are you going? I'm going to let you ride in that rattlesnake nest alone, and you've gotten how good at pulling fangs I am. Well, pull yourself together. I'll get the horses. Yeah. Only take a minute. Welcome to Dangerfield Dips. I'm you in Dangerfield. You favor? This is Rowdy Yates. I've got a sick herd. Uh, how much dipping for ticks? Our rates are reasonable, Mr. Favor. It's not what I asked. How much? Why don't you bring your herd in? We'll make a tally, and I'll give you an exact figure. My tally's up to 3,000 head, give or take a few, uh, plus 50, 60 arrowhead steers. Charge is 500 head. Oh, well. Uh, you call that reasonable? Figure it this way. You give us the 500 head, you end up with 2,500. If you don't give us the 500 head, <laughs> you end up with nothing. With Dangerfield, that sounds uh, pretty close to robbery. I'll give you a fair price. You'll give me 500 head. <laughs> Mr. You haven't got a thing to say about this. There isn't another dip within 200 miles. So I've heard from your brother. What about him? Oh, he's with us for a while. What have you done to him? Just found out his name wasn't Kincaid is all. Uh, we're taking real good care of him. We're lucky. So far. You roughhouse him, and you and your friend here won't ever get over it, I promise you. We don't want to roughhouse him. What do you want? You wanted a herd full of Spanish fever on the trail. It affected my herd. I want him clean. All right. What about my brother? You get him back after the herd is dipped. I'll dip your herd as soon as you bring Reese to me. You get your brother back after the herd is dipped. Regular charge, five cents a head. All right, five cents a head. It's a deal. You and that's throwing ten thousand dollars away. Well, you got what you came for. Now go on back and bring your herd in. Now we have got this straight. We we don't deposit Reese with you until uh, after the last head has been dipped. Mr. Favor, I don't have to like this, but I have got it straight. Bye. All right, it won't do you any good to stand there looking at me like that. They got my brother, my stupid, idiotic brother. And I think I let more of them than any of you think I ought to, don't I? Well, I'll handle it. You just let me handle it, and nobody else suffer. Not you, or me, or my brother. Unless he does something crazy, and even then, I won't let him suffer. Somehow, I'll find a way to get right for him. For all of us. Make sure you don't tear our gun loose.
Feet are slowing up real bad. We're going to lose a lot of cattle right here if we don't ease up. Yeah, they're beginning to flounder. We'll have to rest them for a while. But only for a short spell. Looks like his mother around the eyes. She had beautiful eyes. That idiot Reese coming in here using your name. They sure must have figured they killed you too. When I sent Helen and the baby off, there was a lot of smoke and fire. Bellied out the back door into a root cellar. They were so interested in me, they didn't notice Helen and the baby had gone. Where's your gun belt, Mr. Kincaid? You lose it in the raid? Give it away when I got married. Well, no offense, man, but J.B. Kincaid without a gun is... Your name is J.B. Kincaid. You can't afford to let people know you're walking around without a gun. That don't make good sense. Seem to make good sense. I don't know now. Well, your shoes, I guess I wouldn't know either. I miss my wife, Wishbone. I miss her bad. I'm grateful the baby alive. But I miss my wife. Oh, well, now, hold on, Mr. Kincaid. These things can be used right or they can be used wrong. But you're not using it in either case. Mr. Favor's orders. Now, I'll take my gun back. I need it more than you do, Wishbone. No, sir. I gotta ask you for my gun. Wishbone, if I have to, I'll beat you down or I'll kill you. Gonna shoot me down in front of everybody? In spite of what Mr. Favor said? I don't mind so much that your brother and his people burned me out and shot me up. But my wife was shot up so bad she died. You owe to Mr. Favor to not do this, Mr. Kincaid. I owe my wife more. Give him a gun. None of these rovers wants to lose their herd. That's exactly what'll happen if we let you kill me. How about it, boys? You want to get your herd of the dip alive, like Mr. Favor said? You, give him a gun. Nobody gave him a gun. What do you mean? You gave him yours, didn't you? Give it to him. I didn't give him my gun. He whipped it away from me. Now, you give him your gun, and you're going against Mr. Favor's orders, Joe Scarlett. You going to do that? No. There's only one man here I want to kill. Maybe we better do what he says. Give it to him. Cut him loose. Just let me get the blood back in my hands. Get it working good. You know, it's like my brother to let a job go unfinished. I have to remember to ask him how come you to get away. Pick up the gun. I hate to take advantage of you like this. You being so beat up. He's dead. It had to be done. What's your gun? What were you doing, Scarlet? Looking down Kincaid's gun bro. There was nothing any of us could do. <laughs> Me, Mr. Faber. Who let him have a gun? He got hold of mine. This is the boss's orders. How'd you let a thing like this happen? Well, the fuss. A man who didn't deserve to live is dead, that's all. 
For any of you who don't know what this means, we were going to be seen safe through the dip because he was alive and well. He's no longer alive and well. Due to me. Whether due to you or not, we no longer have a bargain. Yeah, well, we don't have to let the man back there know that. I'm not going to bargain with a dead man. Why not? Where the herd's concerned, I think I would. I made a deal for Ivan. A man's only as good as his word. I'll keep my bargain. Now, you can come with me or not. Are you going to tell you and Dangerfield his brother's dead? Just that. Boy, I think you're wrong, but I'm going with you. For your sake. For my sake? You're going to need all the help you can get, boy. Seems I've caused a lot of trouble. Is there anything I can do to help? Mr. Kincaid, you'd best take yourself and your son. Move on. What we have to do no longer concerns you. Well, I do that, Mr. Favor. How? How'd I get food for Jimmy on my own? The two of us have got to stay with the drive until you reach the next town. That's no lie. Oh. Get yourself into the supply wagon. And stay there. That's an order. Charlotte, Quince, get him on the ground. Pete, get that herd to the dip and fast. Our 72 hours is just about up. Right. Now don't you cause any more trouble. Now you and that, that son of yours, get in the wagon. The back end of the wagon. Back off a of pass, Mr. Favor. Change your mind about a deal? Mine's been changed for me. It has? Your, uh... Brother's dead. Who killed him? It happened. Guess you can say I'm responsible. Yeah. You're responsible, but who did it? You! No. After the dip and I'll show you where we buried him. A half hour ago, you were gonna give me my mother. Now you're gonna give me a grave after the dipping. You think it goes on like nothing happened? Your price was 500 head. With my brother alive. Now with him dead, the price goes up. Name it. Half a herd. Got no choice. You got no choice? You got a choice. You got 20 men on their way here just itching to back you up. When they get through with you people, there'll be enough of you left to be thinking about a herd. Ramrod's a hothead, Trump, boss. Ramrod pull the trigger on my brother? No, he was here with me when it happened. You got a deal. Hold it, real boss. Keep your staying here. Ramrod can bring the cattle in. Bring the herd in, Roddy. They only got a couple of hours before they start dropping. Boss, you just can't walk off. He's too smart to think we'll let him live. Smart? Fool. Fool thinks more of his cat than his own skin. We'll be at the dip soon now. Mr. Favor told him Reese is dead, but he did tell him you did it. Stay down and quiet, huh? You didn't know the men try anything foolish when we reach the dip. But how much I think of the boss, gotta get these cattle through. Ewan, there they come. All right, pick your spots. Now, yeah, boss, get up on that wagon box. Stand on the seat. What for? For you being plain sighty men. They'll know if they try anything, you'll make a perfect target. Now get out of there!
All right, give me your guns. What's doing, mister? You just try and take them, mister. The favor. Maybe you can make them, listen. It wasn't for the deal. It is now. If you want that herd dead, I gotta have the guns. How about it, boss? Give them your guns. All right, get the rest of them. Mistake have us turn in our guns. Maybe. He must think one of us got an ace up our sleeves. I sure hope we have. What's gonna happen when we finish? Bury him through. About a dozen more. Then what's going to happen, Mr. Wishbone? What's going to happen to us? Well, don't count on us getting past the dip. Get all those drovers and line them up over here. Light off your horses. Get over there. Come on, move. The rest of you, too. Over there. Line up over there. All right. We got your half. I'm gonna pick something else first. The man of gun Reese. Now, who was it? None of them. Get over there. Now, which one of you killed my brother? The man who points him out saved his own life. Well! My patience is about to run out. I give the word, my men will cut you all down. Then I'll be sure and get the one-shot breeze. Now, who was it? Who was it? Mr. Pepper left me in charge. I'm responsible. Now, you had nothing to do with it, Pete Nolan. It was my gun. And I'm the one who fired it. JK! You're the one I wanted, you. Cut him down! That's enough. Kincaid doesn't want to kill anybody else. You heard, Mr. Favor. I'm satisfied. I don't know how long the feeling is going to stay with me. Yes, no one owes me this much. Buggy and a team. Now come get some of these blankets. We want that baby cat comfortable.
Say, uh, who gave you the gun this time? Reese's gun. Found it in the supply wagon with his gun belt. And, uh, uh you? Oh, uh, you forgot the one that never comes off me except when I bathe. Oh, when we uh, sell the herd in Sedalia, you want us to send your share from the cattle uh, on into Stanton? Me and the baby will be staying with my sister for a while. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry for all the trouble I made, Mr. Faber. More than made up for Mr. Kincaid. TV. Now, you take good care of J.B. Jr. Well, his name ain't gonna be J.B. Jr. Gonna change it to J.W. James Wishbone Kincaid. Yes, sir. James Wishbone Kincaid. It's a proud and handsome name. I'm sure glad to get the brat off my hands. Now I can stop being a mother. <laughs> Get him up! Move! I wanted those plates dry. Oh, let her rip. Rowdy, that's it. 
Get the chance. Come on. Come on. Get him. 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 Okay, don't find it. Right, right, right. Back to work. Show's over. Oh, is it young? It's felt better. It's good enough to haze Eve with, it, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Fair? boss around over there answers to Gil favor favor mm -hmm. mr. favor yeah. can you another hand ever work kettle I worked about everything one time or another Paid you into the drives. So they're not signing on unless you mean to stick. I'll be staying. All right, you're in drag. Ready to lock boss. A lot of yates, ramrod. Frank Trask. Put something behind your belt and catch you. Bad dead, boys. Keep on the whole arm up. Any takers? Roddy, how about you? Oh, no. You've already taken everybody in camp, Scarlet. No, not everybody. Yeah, Trask, how about it? Why don't you give him a try? Yeah. Somebody's got to take him down a peg or two, Frank. There just won't be no living with him. No, I don't think so. Oh, come on. You can do it. I'm not interested. Look, he's just full of bluff, plus a few tricks. That's all. Look. All you have to do is show him that scar real good and most likely stare him down. Just stay away from me. Just like a grizzly bear. Little bug. I don't know. Started off all kind of friendly and then quit mentioned something about his scar and just went off like a lump of blue powder. Make that a wagon load of powder. I feel like I just took on a locomotive. I know you don't have to tell me. I'm fired. I'm just say that. Why'd you jump Quince? Ask him. I did. Look, I didn't mean to start any trouble. I just wanted it left alone. You seem to be awful touchy about that little scratch on your face. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I just want to be left alone. If that's asking too much, maybe you better fire me. Best get some sleep. We've got a long haul tomorrow. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Trask. Morning.
Saver? Yeah? Sure, kill us all things. I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, yeah, sure. It's a beautiful morning, eh? Well, I got a feeling this is gonna be a scorcher. You see that haze? Boy, when you see a haze like that, Mr. Wishbone says you mighty well told us it's gonna be a scorcher. ask a few questions. What about? I understand you joined the drive yesterday. That's right. Ever been in Salt Springs? No, why? A rancher was killed near there a couple of days ago. What's that got to do with me? Some food was taken. I give the killer some saddle bum. The man's strong enough to break that rancher's neck with one blow. I've been working a ranch up near Hyattville. No, you did come from the north. Smart man might have circled the herd and come in from the opposite direction. Let's take a look at your saddlebag. Help yourself. Your bedroll? Take a look. There's nothing there, I guess you're clean. Oh, hey, Sheriff, uh, how long do you figure you'd be? Oh, two hours, maybe three. It's only 10 miles there and back. Sooner the better. company as far as Grayson. What company? I don't know the boss didn't say. Load up the wagons, unload the wagons, hitch up the team, unhitch the team. Someday somebody around here's gonna make up his rock-headed mind. This is Miss Gil Favor. He's the trail boss. Pleased to meet you, Miss Cuth. And this is, um... Rowdy Yates, ma'am. Mr. Favor, I'm obliged. If there's anything I can do to make your trip easier, you just tell me, huh? If you'll tell me when I get in the way. Well, I'm leaving you in good hands, Miss Curtis. I'll head back for Salt Springs now. Goodbye, Sheriff. And thank you for your kindness. Not at all, Miss Curtis. And good luck. Thanks, Favor. Excuse me, man. We we gotta get started. How to get the men moving? Uh, now, wishbone, get that wagon going. Uh, say, uh, uh, mushy, boss. don't forget anything. Uh, Mister, mushy, be sure to put out that fire, huh? Hey, uh... oh, uh, who's gonna ride with Miss Curtis? Oh, oh yeah, uh, Trask. <laughs> Somebody to drive this wagon. Now, Miss Curtis, this is Frank Trask. He'll uh, help you handle things. I thank you for your help. Oh. 
Uh, Miss Curtis is blind. I won't be too much trouble for you. Better get going if we're gonna keep up with that herd. Being a drover must be a thick life. Always on the move. How many cows are there, or do you haul them steers? Steers, beeves, not much difference. How many are there? About 3,000. You're not very happy with having to watch over me, are you? Well, it ain't that, it's just... I thought maybe you didn't feel much like talking. Sometimes it helps to talk. Sometimes. It's all right if I throw a yes to these beans. You've got everything I ever taught you. Waste not, want not. How about wishbone? We're going to have to wait all night to get poison. All right. It's your stomachs. See if you can come up with some meat next time. Next man. Thank you. Mr. Trask, please don't make the mistake so many people do. I'm blind, but not helpless. I have that much of my fault. I think my blindness hurt him more than it did me. But he never sheltered me. He let me grow up and discover things for myself. There's a reason for everything. Even my blindness. God saw to it. That was his outlook. It used to be mine. What is the reason for his death? There isn't any reason. Any sense. A man breaks into our house and it's Deals of food. He had to steal my father's life, too. Why? Some things just don't have a reason. Maybe, maybe the man was scared. He didn't even mean to hurt your father. But that make it right. I'm not saying it's right, it's just so. It's hard, Mr. Dresk. Believe it's so, I mean. Three days ago, my, my life was sure, safe. Now all I have is an aunt I don't even know. It's not the end, Miss Curtis. I remember a preacher once telling me that every year you live is like a chapter out of storybook. You're just earning a new page, that's all. Crying about the yesterdays don't make the tomorrows any better. Learn to live with that and... and learn to live with almost anything. 
even yourself. Mr. Trask? Yes? Will you promise me something? What is it? If I ever do that again, I feel sorry for myself, I mean. You tell me. Might be I'll even try telling myself. Now, Abilene Bud, now, they sure ain't short on female. But what I hear about Denver now, that... Right behind you. I'll just get you a plate. I only hope the dust didn't make you lose your appetite, Miss Curtis. Not at all, Mr. Faber. Another day or so, I might even ask for a job. <laughs> Here you are. Be careful, it's hot. Bless, O Lord, this food for our use, and as to thine holy service. Amen. 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 Would you like some coffee, miss? Miss Curtis likes tea. We don't have any tea. Tell you, ma'am, you can have coffee, hot, cold, old, or new. That's all Wishbone knows. Now, that ain't not Clint. You know Wishbone will cook anything. It burns. Why, you miserable, low-down, flea bit. Never you mind, Mr. Wishbone. Coffee will be fine. And your cooking is delicious. Would you mind saying that again, ma'am? Just a little bit louder. I said you're an excellent cook, Miss Wishbone. Marcy, find a can of tea we got. Why are we stopping, Mr. Trask? My horse. Here. Hey, Yates! My horse broke loose. One of the boys will pick up. That's all right, I better get him. Ah, uh, you can't go back there with us, Curtis. I don't mind, Mr. Yates. Oh, I do, ma'am. Get moving, Trent. Do some, Mason? It's the other way around, senor. Here, a picture, senor, to Curtis. Saddlebags. I think they belong to St. Trask. Hmm? See? How is it he has a memento of a girl he only just met? Mm hmm. Guess you'd have to ask him. Of course, then you'd have to tell him you'd been going through saddlebags. Oh, senor, I have just lost my sense of curiosity. Mm hmm. Here. What do you do with my saddlebag? The wagon with the others. Thanks. Another? Just before he hit me, too. But I guess I had it coming. 
Much town, boss. You're in or out. Oh. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll bed down. I think I'll go turn on Miss Curtis. Let's see how she's feeling. I'll check on Miss Curtis. When we first met, I, I thought you'd be one of those gruff men who fight what they can't understand. But when I was talking about my father, you were... Do you know what compassion is, Mr. Trask? Compassion? Yeah, I guess so. That's what you had. All the gruffs went away, and you had a sort of gentle strength. Giving me more credit than you ought to. Tell me about yourself. Much to tell. Born in Pennsylvania. Had a farm. Pretty good one, too. Went in the war and got captured. When I got, I went back, but there. Wasn't any harm left. Now I take a job where I can. Work off the land most of the time. Don't you want to do anything? I mean, don't you have any dreams? Everyone has a dream somewhere. What's yours? Oregon. I always wanted to go to Oregon. They say there's so many trees there. So much land. Room for a man. Oregon. Even the word sounds good. Fresh and, and clean. A man could lose himself and find himself, maybe. No place like that around here. Do you want to be on? I want to get another farm. I'd work it, work it hard. I wouldn't bother no one and no one would... Hey, look. What is it? What do you see? a shooting star. Oh, how wonderful. I remember we used to spend just hours watching for shooting stars. If we saw one and said the words just right, our wish would always come true. Starlight, stop right. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I may. Have the wish I wish tonight. It was a lot of years ago. Now I can make the wish, even if I didn't see the star. I wish that... that you'd get to Oregon and everything would be just the way you want it to be. Did you make a wish? Yes, ma'am. Good. Mine probably didn't count anyway. You were the one who actually saw it. Does it bother you if I talk about my blindness? No, it don't bother me. Most people are so funny about it. They want to know if I can hear better than others, or if I can tell I'm going to bump into something. I wish I could. It would be a lot easier on my shins. Have you... Have you always been blind? I was 12 when it happened. I remember what sky looks like, and a tree, and a lake with a sun on it. When you can remember it, it's not so bad. You know what I do wonder about, though? No, what? When I meet someone, I, I always wonder what they look like. Mr. Favor, for instance. Is he a big man who takes long strides when he walks? That's pretty close. Let's see, who else? Mr. Wishbone. Is he short and fat and bald? Most of his hair is sunk down to the chin. See, I can guess what someone looks like, but I never know if I'm right. You know how I picture you, Mr. Trask? How? Well, you're a big man, too, and, and have a face that's, oh, sad, solemn, wise in a way. And your eyes are blue, or maybe gray, deep set, and they smile a lot. You must be very handsome, Mr. Trask. Am I close? That's a terrible question, isn't it? I tell you, you're handsome, so anything you say is wrong. If you say yes, you're a baggard. If you say no, you're in blight. I'm sorry. It's all right. Doesn't matter how I look. 
Well, let me put my hands on your face and I'll be able to do no. it. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to... I'm sorry. It's all right. It isn't that. It's just that... I got about 30 miles of trail dust on my face. I don't mind that. I'd just like to be able to picture you when we talk. Please. All right. Just give me a minute to wash up. Just take a minute. I want you to be me for just one minute. Now don't don't say anything. Just one minute, that's all I ask you. Miss Curtis. I didn't take long. No. Pictured you, Mr. Trask. And you are handsome, really. Better say goodnight now. soul about this. Hey, dirty my clothes. What's that word? Nothing, just mumbling myself. Oh. Here, Miss Curtis, let me help you. Thank you, Mr. Fink. I'm afraid I'm not cut out for cattle driving. Why? As good as a lot of money. Spent the first time out. Matter of fact, compare some of them. You're ready to take over the drive. In a way, I hate for the trip to end. It's good for me meeting someone likes to trask. How long has it been a drover? Oh, I hadn't been with us long. Why? Am I wrong in thinking that a drive like this can come a home for a lot of men who don't have one? I mean, they get the feeling it's a place where they belong. Something like that. That hasn't happened for Miss Trask yet, has it? Maybe that's what he wants it. He has so much. He's intelligent, strong, gentle, too. I'm gonna miss him. Yeah, that's the last of it. This port. Oh! Your father? It's the only one I have of him. They said it didn't turn out very well, but... It meant a lot to us. Both of them. Both of them? The same photographer took one of me, too. He wouldn't accept any money for it. He said it was a work of art. 
really isn't. Even the frame's worthless. Strangely enough, it was the only thing taken the night my father died. Oh, ask here, uh, help this on the wagon. Don't pull out yet. We'll be picking up some strays. Don't want you to get too far ahead of the herd. All right. We're waiting on you. What's that? Could be the end of a gentleman. A what? Now, one thing was stolen from Curtis House, a picker Miss Curtis, and this is where I found it in Tri Satellite. You gotta be wrong about that. You gotta be. Well, we'll see. What are you gonna do, huh? Do I got a choice? Well, you can wait till you hear his side of it. Uh, he might have found that somewhere. All right, get him over here. I don't know. Drift again, I guess. Trask, Mr. Paper wants to talk to you. All right, wait. Be back in a minute. You wanna see me, Mr. Paper? somewhere who cared. No need for her to know about this. We only hurt her. Asking has always come hard for me, Miss Favor. But I ain't asking, no. I'm begging. Best tell Miss Curtis will we'll be laying over for a while. Thanks. Send for the sheriff. Ain't there some other way we can handle this thing? Look, it ain't up to me to decide either way. Send Scarlet for the sheriff. I told her one of the wagons went down. That's what she thinks, unless you tell her differently. Will you? She'll probably have to testify to her side of the story. Why? I told you I did. If they hang me, there's not a whole lot left that's gonna die. Maybe I don't deserve a chance, but she does. If you tell her... I can't do anything about it. Can't you understand that? I had sent for the sheriff. But you can fix it with him. He'll listen to you. You're asking me to make a deal I don't know I can keep. All right, then. Jimmy, right now. Make up any story you want. You can't get out of that easy trash. We'll have to wait for the sheriff. But he...
You better tell her something. It's a rowdy man. Mr. Yates, what's going on? Well, uh, we just had a little problem up ahead. Is Mr. Trask all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's fine. You better excuse me, ma'am. Guess is as good as mine. He ain't said word since he got up there. Trask! There's only one way out, Trask! Come on down! Throw your gun away! Drive. Sheriff, if he made a full confession, the girl have to go to trial. What difference did that make? He's not afraid of the trial. Well, he doesn't want the girl to know. What are you talking about? Look, what more do you need besides a full confession? I know that man. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. Don't come any closer! Time for a deal passed. Rowdy, come back here. Frank? Frank, this is Rowdy. Look, uh, Sheriff Keeler wants to make a deal with you. All you gotta do is give yourself up, make a confession, and Miss Ernest doesn't have to go back. Hear me, Frank? She doesn't have to go back. All you have to do is give yourself up, make a confession, that's all. You hear me? I'm trusting you, Yates. Don't let me down. You were gone so long. What was the matter? We caught the man who killed your father. The man, was he? No, the sheriff's taking him back to Salt Springs for trial. Just a worthless saddle bum. Is there someone who'll be able to drive me back at the trial? The sheriff said there's no need. The man admitted everything. Mr. Tresk. You know there isn't much hate in me. But I do hate the man who killed my father. Men like that can't be hurt by hate. But it could hurt you. Hatred's its own fire, fuel. Once it starts, it doesn't stop. I'm your friend, ain't I? You know you are. I think it's best that you go on to Grayson. I think it's what's best for you. And I think it's what your father would have wanted. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Again. Goodbye, Miss Curtis. Where are you going? Back with the sheriff. He, um, he, he wants me as a, a witness. And after that? I think I'll finally get to Oregon. 
I think that's wonderful. Bye, Miss Curtis. Will you kiss me goodbye? to try. Man says he can't. I'll just take that. <laughs> I've got a mouse to feed. Well, Jesus would be glad to oblige. Jesus! Come on, take that shirt off and square off on him, Sam. He ain't had that shirt all the whole six weeks he's been with us. Man, purely enjoys dirt. So much time, man. Another time, man. Another time, Another time, Black snake whip. Iron bars with the striped suit I wore for five years. Anything else you want to know? Looked on. Runs just like the rod track. Fine. As long as we don't get derailed. Bad news. And why should this day be any different? Uh, right over the next ridge, the prettiest, flattest country, the greenest grass. What? Tick fever. Now the last drive through lost half the beads. Good! Tell me you, Sugar Creek. Is it fair size? Fair enough. Then the general store should carry tick butter. How bad is it? Bad enough to let the detour with you through Sugar Creek. There's a valley close by to my ranch. Knee high and grass all year round. Should be a fine. Once we get the powder, we got nothing to worry about. Any of the herd can down with tick, we can make our own dip and run them through. <laughs>
Chuckle. Yeah, was it a chuckle? Post is, Mr. Corden. Back off, Lloyd. Breathe. We need to get a doctor. Is he going to admit? Oh, I don't know. This bleeding's going to be too much for me. Tell the Sugar Creek's only five to six miles. There's got to be a doctor. Mushy! I'm going to need blankets. Hey, lots of them. Am I going to make it? Maybe. Maybe not. I got a boy named Jody. He lives in Sugar Creek with his grandfather, James Wickham. I haven't seen him in... Honey. You can always take a wagon into town. He can buy what we need while you're rounding up a doctor, all right? All right. I'll meet you at the store. Doctor? Well, you look pretty healthy, young fella. Well, it's not me. It's one of them out with our trail herd. Kind of hurt bad. Oh. Well, I just hope you're not too far from town. No, not far from the Garrett spread. Well, Sam Garrett, that's the man's herd. This is an emergency. Yeah, well, I, uh, I just remembered I changed my office hours. Wait a minute, maybe you didn't hear me right. I said the man dying out there. A human being. Sam Garrett is no human being. Look, I know what your personal grudge is against Garrett, but you're supposed to be a doctor. There's one in Granville. Granville? Where's that? Dewey East, 75 miles. 75 miles, the man will be dead by the time I ride that far. That's his problem. Suppose you could tell me where James Whitkin lives? Yep. Second house from the end of the street. Not that it'll do you much good. Unless these eyes of man have turned in their time, that's a new face I'm looking at. Yeah, my name's Yates, sir. I'm, I'm with a cattle drive. Easter here. Better and better. Been a long time since we bought cattle in this house. Here, plant yourself. I'll call my grandson. Be a great treat for him. Uh, look, Mr. Wickham, there's something you will know uh, about the boy's father. He's with us. Hurt kind of bad. Well, maybe you ought to tell the boy how to break it to him, General. There's no need to break it to him, gentle or otherwise. The day I wiped Sam Garrett out of that picture with my daughter, it was wiped out our lives forever. Yeah, but the man might be dying. Be better for the boy. Can you say that? Easy. Jody was only knee high when Sam did what he did to the everlasting shame of his family. For five years, I worked to erase the memory of it. And I've just about exceeded it. Look. Mr. Whitcomb Garrett has a right to see his son. He wants to see him. The boy has that right, too, for the matter. Jody! Jody! You're right. It's his choice, man. Jody, this is Mr. Yates. He wants to take you to your pa. He come himself, boy, but he's hurt kind of bad. Why do you have to come here? Well, that's for him to say. I don't have to go, do I, Grandpa? Please, don't let him take me. You satisfied? Look, Jody, your, your pa needs you bad. He killed my mother. Any other questions?
knows his way twice on a skillet knows enough to be prepared for tick fever. That's why I told the trail boss, too. Mm -hmm. What'd he tell you? He said, go into Sugar Creek and get some tick powder. That's the last of them, Mr. Henry. Well, that isn't hardy enough. Your supply train through here a couple of days. If you felt still in the neighborhood, we'd be glad to send some out. Guess I haven't got any choice. Did you find Doctor all right? Yeah, he can't make it. Something you ought to know on. They got Sam Garrett with them. Oh, they yeah. have. Well, you take us up right by store. Yes, Mr. Henry. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Ah, uh, that's my party, young fella. Something biting you, mister. I just bought that stuff. No money change hands. You ain't bought it yet. Give them the money, Wishbone. These boys are friends of Sam Garrett. I sure could use some volunteers to help unload his wagon. Of course, I'll help them, Mark. I'm cold that there ain't gonna be no volunteers for nothing. I'm gonna get my property first. Hold it! Hold it! All of you! What's the trouble? We bought this stuff, now you won't give it to us. No money changed hands. I changed my mind. Sure, if we got a herd face tick fever. All right. These boys brought Sam Garrett back. Oh. Well, it's your merchandise, Mark. Yours to do with as you see fit. This is cattle country. You can't sit around and let a herd get diseased. It hurts. It sure does hurt. Hmm. I don't know what Garrett did to you people, but whatever it is, he's a human being. And he may be dying out there. Just remember that as you're trying to live with yourself, Doctor. All right, boys. Come. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I still like to know the reason why. Only one reason. Sam Garrett. If you mention that name in that town, and a wall eight goes up, so thank you could track a match on it. Yes, and goes for the powder. When they found out Sam Garrett with us, they didn't seem to care about 3,000 head of cattle. How about gathering up a few of the boys and giving Sugar Creek a little visit, boss? No, not until I find out what it's all about first. Clay, you take a swing up through that tick country. See if you can at least find a thin spot. We don't get that power, maybe we can at least try and pull the herd through. It's a waste of time. But I'll try. We'll see what you can do for Garrett. Well, you've done all I can. Well, then think of something else. Another doctor? Granville, now 75 miles. Oh. Well, get started. Oh, that'll be too long. Yeah, I know. But we gotta try. Oh, you two spread the word. Nobody leaves the herd until I say. Hey, wait a minute. Looks like I won't have to make that right after all. Changed his mind, huh? I brought our so-called sawbones as far, now you can take over. The town will remember this, Marcy. Coming from you, Doc, that's almost a compliment. Where's Sam? Right over there, next to that tree. Well, there's one female that's really got a lot of something. Yeah. I read back to the herd and pass that word. You know, a man once told me these things could uh, sell a lot of things, including a guilty conscience. The use of force creates problems, Yates. It doesn't solve them. You the fail, boss? Your favor. Unless I'm permitted to leave right now, you'll both be charged as accessories. Doctor, that man dies over there. 
I'm gonna be doing some charging. See, it's a stalemate, Doc. Get your bag, huh? Doc, how bad do you think? You boy would have... If you know what to do with it, just so it's hot. we we'll need plenty of it. This isn't going to be pretty. You better wait over at the buggy. Doc, I'm sorry. Save it for the sheriff. Hey, you two! Come on over here. I we'll need both of you to hold him down. See, si, senor. Rowdy Yates, ma'am. I know. I, I saw you now. This here's Gilfay. I'm much obliged to both of you. For Sam, honey. It's more the other way around, Miss... Uh... McGillian. Uh, that's why everybody calls me Marcy. Yeah. Oh, if you hadn't brought the doctor, nothing we could have done would have made any difference. Well, you better take this. You might be a doc again sometime. Oh. Well, you might as well throw that away. Fire and pins busted. Oh, the coffee's on. What, Sam ain't uh, gonna help him any. Yeah. I'm talking, Mike. So talk. Who was talking with? You, Sam. I just came along for the ride. Sam's the one that got so. I'd sure Creek closed its door to him. Because Sam's a ghost five years dead. Sugar Creek can't stand to look the face it wore the day it nailed the lid in his coffin. Is that why Whitcomb and Jody feel the way they do? The way they talk, you'd think Sam would be better off than that. Not Jody, Mr. Yates. Only Whitcomb. He hates Sam for taking his daughter away from him. He never forgave the marriage. Oh, the boy blamed Sam for killing his mother. Whitcomb put those words in his mouth. And he put the hate in his heart. Nancy Garrett died of heartbreak because they took some away from her. There never were two people more in love. Why'd Sam leave Sugar Creek? Well, Sam came home in 62. One side of him weighted down with some iron left over from Manassas. And he saw right away that the cattle business wasn't going to keep Sugar Creek alive. So he decided to switch to cotton. He got everybody to go along with him. Everything worked just fine. Until he sold his first crop to a buyer from Boston. I know it doesn't seem bad now, but well, five years ago, trading with the North was worse than dancing with the devil, at least in these parts. Well, Sam swore that the man was an agent from England, but he couldn't prove it. It was a trial. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, you want to call it that. Sam branded a traitor, and he was sentenced to five years of hard labor, and if that wasn't enough, those two late locusts took his house, his crops, and his hand. Feeling about this place the way you do? Why do you say? Well, I run a saloon, Mr. Trey Boss. Besides, I stopped chasing rainbows a long time ago. Does, uh, Sam know how Jody people the Sugar Creek feel about him? Well, a little. I mean, I tried to tell him, but... Garrett wouldn't need any telling if he had any sense. Man has to be a pretty big fool to come back after what he did. Sam. Well, I stopped the bleeding, cauterized the wound. He's in no danger. Not for that wound, anyway. And what? Men have been hung for less. It was five years ago, Doc. Five years or 50. Treason is still treason, Yates. The people who were living here when he sold out still can't hold their heads up in decent company. Morton paid for what he did. He can't ask anything more. We might. If you have to look at him. You better get used to it, Doc. Sierra owns a hundred head of McCattle on this herd. He's planning on settling down right here, start a new brand. He thinks that. Not only a stub fool, he's a blind fool. 
Everyone knows that a traitor forfeits his holdings the day he's sentenced. Garrett doesn't own a ranch. He doesn't own one square inch of land in this county. But I do. When the Garrett land went on the block, I bought his house and 50 grazing acres. Well, you said that was an investment. So I lied. Soon as Sam is well enough, I'm going to take him back where he belongs to stay. If you go through this, I'm warning you, you're through in Sugar Creek. I was through in Sugar Creek five years ago. Mind if I take over your camp for a spell? Looks give it back. <laughs> well, trail bossing ain't in my line. See, I told you, Doc, it's a standoff. I think you ought to throw in your cards when you still can. I haven't got that much to lose, Yates. But what about you? Sam Garrett and Sugar Creek are none of your business. You take my advice, you'd head north while you still can. But the country facing us ahead, not without that powder. Good. Suit yourself. Like I said, the sheriff is going to have something to say about it. Fine. We'll hear it together. How do you keep the men here? Horses are over there, Doc. Everything's going to be so fine, Sam. Now all you have to do is open them big blue eyes and say hello to an old friend. I thought it was you, Marshal. But... Well, you aren't the type to be wearing wings. I know. Me and Lucifer. Your loves, Marcy. They helped. Well, I made it practicing with my letter, and I knew were a good excuse. Got a couple bucks for you to buzz, Sam. I bought it. Sure. Just help me strap on my spurs. <laughs> Where's Jody? Oh, well... Uh, he, uh, he went on a hunting trip. He'll be back tomorrow. After five years. Tomorrow, a long way off. Marsh, I wrote to him regular. He never wrote back. Why? Mr. Wishbone! Oh, it's hot! Oh! Well, use a handle. Sam, you just rest easy, and I got you some soup here. Oh, thanks, Wish. I don't feel much like eating. Look, I nurse made that calf of yours. I guess I know how to nurse made you. You do as you told, Sam. Now, look, Wish, I now don't... you just eat, and I'll do the talking. Now, isn't that good? You feel better already, don't you? Do you tell a man his only son wishes he was dead and buried? There aren't going to be any more tomorrows. It just can't come from me. But I've got to find a way to get Jody out here. Oh, friend, old oh, friend. You should take a lot on yourself, aren't you? I'm Marcy, Mr. Yates. I'm no more, no less, no apologies. But Sammy, he's something special. You see, a long time ago, he poured me out of a bottle and pointed me to north. It's as simple as that. He needs you now, Marcy. He needs Jody more. Yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, the herd's all better down. I haven't too much to do. I kind of just take a ride into town, come sun up, have a little talk with that boy. You know, if I stay around here much longer, cowboy, I'm going to stop believing there's hope for the human race after all. Uh, you just don't let Sam get drowned in wishbone soup, huh?
Oh, well, close the door. Yes, Mr. The doc. I was about ready to start looking for you. Huh? Marcy. She came after me with a gun. This private party? Not anymore. Not as far as that saloon woman is concerned. She forced me to turn the Sam Garrett at the point of a gun. And Mr. Trail Boss here, he backed her up. There's a law against that. And jail cells back him up. There's laws against killing a man, too. Garrett probably had died. But then I figured it just must have been some kind of mistake. No. No mistake. Treason is treason, no matter how you read it. Sam Garrett ain't welcome here, and neither are his friends. Six weeks ago, I didn't know he was alive. You brought him back. I brought a hundred head of cattle from me. Asked if he could stay with the drive until we reached Sugar Creek. Now, that's the whole of it. What do you want the cattle for? Well, I gathered to start up his ranch here again. He's got a ranch. Wrong, huh? Marcy is going to turn title back to him on that piece that she bought. He should have run that woman out of Sugar Creek five years ago. Look, this woman and Garrett and Sugar Creek are your problem. That herd out there is mine. All I'm asking for is enough powder to see him through the tech country ahead. All right. I'll make a deal with you. You can have your powder if you help us get rid of St. Garrett. No, that cattle that he bought off of you. Unmake that deal. You take the cattle back, he can't stay here, ranch or no ranch. The cattle already belongs to Sam. Not if you take it back. I'm sorry. It's not my way of doing things. Don't be a fool, Favor. A trailer like Sam Garrett is worth your herd. He's already made. As far as I'm concerned, that's the way it'll stand. Just one more thing. I may put out a warrant for you for holding Doc against his will. How you think that over? Well, I'll do that. You think this over? I'll be back with my men for that order. I don't bluff, Favor. You take one thing from Sugar Creek at gunpoint, and you got a war on your hands. Well, then we got a war on our hands. I take my herd through that tick country without protection. That disease will spread for 500 miles. Find a law to change that. I'll listen. Father. Like I said, Mr. Yates, I haven't got a father. She didn't hate your pa, boy. And he didn't kill her. How do you know? Why would he come back? Why would he come after you if he was all the things your grandfather said he is? Look, your pa's hurt, boy. He'd you bad. That's a lie. For five years, he didn't care if I was dead or alive. If you really cared, why didn't he write? He did write you. He, he wrote you regular. Yates! You were told once you were not wanted. Next time, I'll have the sheriff say for me. I was just leaving. You can't run away from this thing, Jody, any more than you can run away from a shadow. I think you owe it to yourself to find out what the real truth is. What the hell, maybe. Jody, the next time that man bothers you. Grandpa. Yes? You and me, we always told each other the truth, right? That's right. Did Pa write? About once a month, I burn him. Just like I burned everything else that he ever touched. But don't you see, boy? I did it for you. I couldn't have him destroy you. Like he did her. I did it for you. Jody, you believe me, don't you, when I say that I did it for your own good? Sure. For long he'll be gone, and then everything will be like it was before. Jody, promise me you won't try to see him. It would only cause misery. Grandpa, I can't promise. Grandpa. 
Grandpa? Yes? Ma wasn't really ashamed of Pa, was she? I sure like it fine, but it still isn't going to do much. Huh? But tick infection spreads for five miles. It means we're right back where we started. And if we don't get that powder, only one direction we can head back to San Antonio. Well, I was never much for walking back. Give me ten minutes and I'll have that powder by sundown. I look. I see, will you? But just think I was going to throw that pants away. I was going to cut it up for action. Gee, these pants fit just great. But I, uh, I don't know. I can't seem to do much with this shirt. Well, ma'am, I got another one. One with some stripes. Hushy. The shirt looks fine, miss. Matter of fact, it never looked better. I knew we were short-handed, but I had no idea it was this bad. All right. So I'll never make a drover. No, uh, Marcy, uh, this is Clay Forrest, or our scout. <laughs> so I noticed. That uh, horse of yours would use some cooling off. Me too. The rest of you get back to work. Righty. Hmm? Good a time as any to cut out Sam Garrett's guy. Don't take him over to a spread. All right. And use enough men to get him in the dark. Right. Now, right. Now. Now. All right. How's the patient? Oh, I'll be all right. I'm not so sure about the boys. You always told me it took war paint and a St. Louis dress to make a man sit up and look. Okay. So next time I'll wear boots and a fresh set of freckles. Well, either way, I like what I see. In a cattle camp, any woman will look like she just stepped out of a sore catalog. Don't let the sun get in your eyes, Sam. Well, now that works both ways, Marcy. You stand to lose a lot by coming out here, taking my side against Sugar Creek. Why? Oh, maybe because I, uh, I can abide by stack decks. <laughs> or maybe I'm just naturally interested in uh, table stakes and short odds. No, Sam. All right. You did something for me once, and I... Uh, I'm just trying to balance the books. No, that's not enough, either. Marcy, I'd like to think that once this is done, we can both keep a little of that sun in our eyes. You've been away a long time, Sam. Don't say anything you regret. It's sad, Marcy. And I never felt better. For Sam Garrett. He's right over there. He, uh, he's been waiting for you, Jody. You my pa? Just as certain as you're my son. What's so certain about that? You haven't seen me in five years. Well, a man doesn't have to see us every day to know him. I hear you got hurt. Is it bad? Oh. Well, no, it wasn't a time you took a header out of the peach tree, remember? Why'd you come back? To see you, Jody. To make a home for you, if you want it. I already got a home. Grandpa. 
Yeah. I'm sure he's been good to her, too. But I just hoped you'd want to be with me. Jody, we were happy at that ranch once. I figure we can make it work again. I got cattle with you and a few ideas about stocking a new herd. I, I even got a calf for you. Will you come and visit me once in a while? Maybe. I'm glad you're not hurt too bad. That meant a lot to you, Dad, Jody. Thanks for holding my horse, mister. Anytime. Well, that's a start. Now the rest is up to Jody. Afraid the rest is up to Shook Creek. Heard there was a meeting going on. I figured maybe you'd like to hear what I got to say. Well, we understand how you feel, Jim. The only trouble is this whole thing's gotten out of hand. Some drovers. From where I sit, I figure we made a big mistake holding back that powder. Favor and his boys can come in here and take anything they want. Now, every judge in the territory would back them up. Well, give them the powder. Well, that's just what we decided to do, Jim. Makes sense. Now, we'll use fine 20 men to get it one. We all feel the same way about Garrett. There's nothing we can do about it. Marcy saw to that. You're willing to let him sell here again? Pollute the very air you breathe? Well, my God just told you there's nothing we can do about it. There's one thing you can do about it. Wait till his friends head north and then hit him. Burn out his ranch. Run off his stock. Without that, he's got nothing to stay here for. Where Garrett's concerned, I'm not too fussy about the law. That's going too far. As long as I'm wearing this, there's not going to be any burning or raiding. Time will take care of Garrett. A couple months, what? He'll have to leave. A few months may be too late. I don't want to lose Odie the way I lost Nancy. I told you, Jim, we understand how you feel, but... No man understands how I feel. And none of you understand to what lengths I'd go to destroy Sam Garrett. Now look, five years ago, you were all howling for a tar overcoat and a long ride on a short rail for him. And now you're ready to forget what he did. Garrett, pay his price. The law asks for no more. Maybe the law doesn't, but I do. Only I'm not asking. I'm telling. Just what does that mean? You bought a piece of Garrett land art up at the head of the valley. Take off that badge and it'll be a rocking chair address, right? The new hotel of yours, Mort. That was built on land that was once Garrett land, and the same thing for you, Harper. That saw mill that you own with Judd. Garrett land. Well, we bid on it fair and square. The land's ours. Only because he was convicted as a traitor. But suppose he wasn't guilty. Suppose he can prove that someone else arranged the cotton deal up north. Then he'd have legal title to his property, and all that would be left to you are broken dreams. Well, that's crazy. Because Garrett was guilty. Of course he was guilty. There's no question about that. Uh, that's ridiculous. You're all wrong. I set up that deal. And then I fixed it so every door was slammed in Garrett's face. The only mistake I made was to let him walk out of the line. Which all adds up to only one thing. Either you back me up now, help me run Garrett clean out of the territory, or you stand to lose everything you own. Well, what's it going to be? Spend the rest of your life in broken down rocking chairs with no land to rock on? The vacuum where your pride used to be. Make up your mind, boys. It's everything you own or get it. Be no charge for it. 
thanks. What about Sam? Like you said, Favor, he's our business, not yours. Good luck to you. Mr. Fever, you can have a camp back now. This will never be the same. Hey! Oh, ma'am, you don't want to forget your dressing and thing. Oh, Mushy, I'm sorry. I, I forgot I still have on your... Oh, you can keep them, ma'am. I couldn't never wear them again. You know, if uh, Sam runs out on you, Marcy, you'd expect me to come call, huh? I remember the cowboy. Favor, I'm beholden. Now, Sam, next time we're through this way, we'll probably contract in your herd to take it north. You sure you can handle Sir Creek alone? I'm not alone. Any more. I can handle it. Be easy, Sam. Gave up kind of easy. Well, I'd take more than a time to beat that pair. Well, what are you all standing around for? Waiting for a prayer meeting? Wishbone, get that pot ordered and start rolling. The rest of you line out that herd. We got drives to go with. Just a little hunting trip, Jody. Nothing to worry about. It's Pa, isn't it? I'll be back for some time. Supper started. Place a straightened up prop. He ought to be able to get along just fine till Jake. You're planning on leaving? Well, I got a saloon to run, remember? You don't need me. Oh, now that's for me to say, Marcy. Look, I want you to stay. Sam. I ain't much for words, so I'm only going to say this once. You listen, and you listen good. Coming back meant only one thing. Jody, nothing else. This place of cattle. It was just something to use, like rock handy and a cardboard castle. Now? Well, now they mean something more. Because you're here. You're part of it, Marcy. Part of living again. You take that away from me and... Not even Jody could keep the grass green or the sun bright or that kettle inside boiling just right. It's too soon, Sam. You can't be sure. What do you want me to do, Miss Gillahinahan? Get on my knee and bust open these stitches? No, not that. You don't even have to say words. Boys must be getting old. Why, you let almost a whole day pass before you drop by. Five minutes, Get. You got that long to clear out. You and that woman of yours. Five minutes or five years, it's still the same. I didn't run then and I ain't running now. I make it four minutes now. You have no right. 
This land is free and clear. Aren't you no better? You're a law officer. Was a law officer, Marcy. Right now, I'm it's another citizen. The badge don't come off that easy. Not when it'll have to cover killing. This time, that's what it'll have to be. You burn me out, and I'll build again. You run me off, and I'll scratch my way back. There's only one way this is going to get set. Now, either you ride up here, or two minutes is all you've got left. Jim, he means it. So do I. Sooner or later, Garrett's going to leave us in peace. You're going to have to put me on that list, too. I'm Sam. To stay. One minute. Read your jury. It is a hunting trip. Ah. Put that rifle away, Jim. It'll work. Where do you want the first one, Garrett? High or low? That's as far as it goes, Jim. If you haven't got the stomach for it, then ride out. It's going to be slow, Garrett. Slower than the five years of purgatory I put you through. I did it. The only treason you committed was stealing my daughter behind my back. I vowed then that I'd walk on your grave no matter what it cost. Think of that now, Garrett. Think of that when you die. Just fine, Jody. I'm just fine. You boys out of joy, Redden? Nope. I'll throw you right off of that kid. We, we thought figured... maybe you needed a little help. So we talked it over and... When I want help, I usually ask for it. Right? Right. right. Did I ask? Well, what are we sitting here for? We got a hurry to push. I know, I know. Head him up. Hold him up. 